Hello, good day and welcome again to this channel on YouTube Missionaries Histories of Papua New Guinea Welcome here in Ondirilsau in this street Dainzavik which is named after Mr. Pastor Johannes and Martin Dainzer who were sort of the, the original very first inspectors who were to deal with international mission especially the developments towards working in Australia and Papua New Guinea and sending missionaries in that region. Martin and Johannes Steins are very the street and here there's this winter time though we have a little snow. We visit a madam who knew very well Johann Fliel when she was younger and who had also a pioneer missionary as her father, Reverend Friedrich Bayer. And here are the photos of the two inspectors of the former mission, Martin and Johannes Deinzer, who were so instrumental to bring missionaries across and let them enter New Guinea to bring the gospel of the Lord also to this region. Here is Mrs. Bayer. We welcome her and she welcomes us to be in her house and to give some recording on mission history of their father. There are three children, three girls, and also then to inform us about some encounters which were very important. She's not very young, but in spirit very young. At the age of 91, 92 now soon, she's doing a wonderful job in telling stories. So let us please listen to her story today and be informed about things which may be of interest for you personally. Yes. Dear Mrs. Mata Bayer, thank you for welcoming me in your house. And I know that all your life was connected to non Ao. Also, do you have a very personal relation to missionary history in Papua New Guinea, which you have visited again and again, while you even were born there? Can you please tell us why you have this relation? It ha all has to do with my father, who was sent by the Noendelsau Mission Society in 1911 to New Guinea to serve as a missionary in the Lutheran uh, mission there, which was started by Johann Flill in 1886. This part of New Guinea had become a German colony in 1884. My father was stationed in 1915 at Malalo after having learned the Diagbim language. He was able to build a house there, looking after cattle and doing missionary work, in, mostly in the station school. In 1980, a 18. A big baptism was held by him. Thank you. This is very interesting to hear, Mrs. Marabaya, that your father was a Lutheran pioneer in that region at the mouth of the Markham River. What about your own relations with New Guinea? I was born in 1929 with my twin sister Hedwig on Saddleberg Mountain one of the three first mission stations in the mid of the early mission beginnings. As a daughter of that missionary, Friedrich Bayer, and his wife Sibylle, he had been the pioneer of Malano and the whole region, region years before he married Sibylle, who had followed him from Germany in 1922. Our family returned to Neuendettelsau after a very long term of service of my father in New Guinea. Nineteen years after he had left this place to commence to a two years recreation period here in Germany. My older sister Erika was born already 1926 in Helsburg. She would have had to stay in Germany in a boarding house for mission children at a very young age. 
my parents had planned to return for the continuation of their mission service in New Guinea. But my father suddenly died shortly before the planned departure back to New Guinea after an appendicitis. Our mother remained with us children here in Neuendettelsau. Thank you. It is quite moving to imagine how your mother and you three sisters had to make your living here in Neuendettelsau without your father Friedrich Bayer. Thanks to your advanced age and you being part of a missionary family, you did meet also the first Lutheran missionary in New Guinea, Johann Flier, when he returned to Nordetelsau around 1936. What was your impression about this senior? When Johann Flier came back for good to Germany from southern Australia, to live here in Neuendettelsau as from 1936 onwards, he lived next to us and we often met him. At that time we used to call all co-workers of our parents and parents' uncle and aunt and so we called senior Johann Flirl Uncle Senior. I do remember well what a very friendly man he was to all of us children. My older sister had a very had very dark eyes and he used to say to her, her Erika, you have colds in your face. <laughs> very interesting, this early encounters with the pioneer missionary Johan Flier. What else comes to your mind? when you remember his life and the counting of his missionary legacy and his position and his work here in our place in our Dettelsau. Johann Flirl's speeches were very plain and also popular. I do remember as he once climbed up the stairs in the big Lutheran hall to the speaker's desk. While going up he said, here comes a simple wanderer who only does ask God for ransom. I was so impressed by those words that I still do remember them. At that time the mission people were very pious and had monthly prayer meetings. There they also got actual reports about the situations and developments in New Guinea Senior Flirl was widely acknowledged as the founder of the Lutheran Church in New Guinea and was a well-known person in Neuendettelsau and beyond with his wide beard. He did speak so friendly to everyone from lower to higher people. Thank you. What about your very special memory or experience how the senior reacted to the dreadful rule of Nazi terror in Germany with regard to some initiatives he took? Senior Flirl often came to our house because our mother was a good typewriter and he asked her to type letters for, for him. At that time of the Nazi regime, Adolf Hitler was the leader in Germany, like a chancellor of that empire or the Führer. Johann Flirl observed carefully and critically the worsening situation in Germany, and he was shocked about atrocities with that happened at that time, which had come to his knowledge and wanted to warn him. For that purpose, he dictated critical letters and addressed to Hitler himself. So he dictated to your mother those letters in order to warn Hitler, or to say to bring him to change his mind. Very interesting. You had once said your mother typed a letter to Adolf Hitler by Senior Flier. How did your mother and your own family feel and act on that? writing a letter to the Führer, the Chancellor, so to say. 
Flil had such a positive view and perception about mankind that in his opinion Adolf Hitler would never have allowed all the awful occurrences if he would have been well aware of them. Therefore he felt challenged and thought that it was his task to advise and warn Hitler about what happened was happening. Uh, Flill's daughter-in-law, Johanna Flill, knew that Flill had asked my mother to write these letters to Hitler, and she was afraid that her father would run into serious difficulties. So she begged my mother to give her the letters since she had decided not to send these letters to Hitler. When uh, he had posted letters on his own, she went to the postmaster and he helped her to find those letters in the outgoing mail to put many as possible to the garbage. Johanna was afraid that the Nazis would come and look lock Flil into one of the concentration camps, which would mean that he may lose his life there. Thank you. So your early years were very much connected to the mission family in Neudelsau, as well as you were acquainted with Daniel Flil until the end of his life. Yes, indeed, and I do remember well his burial in 1947 here in Neuendelsau. Former New Guinea missionary Stutznow Egger talked about his life and work in New Guinea and had some resume. At the end of this funeral ceremony, he spoke with a very strong body language. With his hands and whole body, he cried out, Oh, now all oh, the Papuan Christian in heaven will sing out, Here comes Bing Sulang Vavlil. We are glad to see him. Our old Bing Su is here with us now. That was very impressive. Thank you, Mrs. Bayer. A very interesting live account on your early experiences with regard to your father and especially the senior of Lutheran pioneer work in New Guinea. I believe, and I think many believe so, that it is very healthy and important to keep those positive memories alive all in times where less people know about mission or where some may entertain short of false allusions about former missionaries in their blessed work. So it is so important to remember how Senior Fliel as a pioneer did care a lot during his service and leadership in New Guinea also about human rights. He did protest, as we know, many times against injustice, how it was afflicted by colonial powers from whom he always distanced himself significantly with love and respect for indigenous people and took a stand for them, also by writing letters even though the Queen of England. It is certainly wise to carry about a balanced information and not to be one-sided. Thank you so much. Your information is so valuable because they are authentic from you self, yourself as an eyewitness and member of a former missionary family alike. And those information will be brought across now to others, especially Lutheran Christians in Papua New Guinea who can watch and listen. So the purpose, I think, of such impressive story ultimately is to give honor to God Anutu, who uses his servants to help the gospel of Jesus Christ achieve and do what it was sent for. Thank you so much. This was an interview and a live account of Mrs. Mata Bayer, together with her witnessing twin sisters and sisters, Hedwig and Erika, who are not here today, born Bayer, and I am Reverend Dr. Traumut Farnbacher, also living in Danza Street, non Au. And I'm glad to be the administrator for those interviews. Thank you. God bless you all. And let us keep alive the positive memories on the former missionaries. God bless.